Education is not what it is said to be by some who profess to put knowledge into a soul which does not possess it, as if they could put sight into blind eyes. So the entire soul must be turned until its eye can bear to contemplate reality. Now there may well be an art whose aim would be to effect this very thing, the conversion of the soul, not to put the power of sight into the soul's eye, which already has it, but to ensure that instead of looking in the wrong direction, it is turned the way it ought to be. We cannot learn for people. We can point the souls in the right direction. And Dick Young adds, a good education teaches skills. It encourages critical thinking. It engenders social consciousness. A great education, however, touches the soul. And I love that Promethean touch. For to teach is to create a space in which the obedience to truth is practiced. To become a better teacher, I must nurture a sense of self that both does and does not depend on the responses of others. And that's a true paradox. To learn that lesson well, I must take a solitary journey into my own nature, and I must seek the help of others in seeing myself as I am. That's Parker Palmer emphasizing that we accompany students and we learn ourselves, and we must embrace paradox in teaching. As James Baldwin points out, the paradox of education is precisely this, that as one begins to become conscious, one begins to examine the society in which he is being educated. And the purpose of education, finally, is to create in a person the ability to look at the world for himself, Plato see reality, to make his own decisions. But no society is really anxious to have that kind of person around, see Jesus or Socrates. What societies really, ideally want is a citizenry which will simply obey the rules. But if a society succeeds in this, that society is about to perish. The teacher must stand both for and against the society in which she works, because everything depends on the person who stands in front of the classroom. The teacher is not an automatic fountain from which intellectual beverages may be obtained. He is either a witness or a stranger. To guide a pupil into the promised land, she must have been there herself. What we need more than anything else is not textbooks, but text people. A course exists as an idea. A classroom exists in a physical space, but a class exists in time. A course in a catalog description can promise knowledge, rigor, books, experiments, assessments, evaluations. A classroom can be cold or warm, comfortable or not, highly decorated or sparse, technologically furnished or neo-Luddite. But each class should be a palace built in time, a cathedral built in time, a place where we live and worship, where we nourish others and where we are nourished. Jim Turk and Joan Phelan are two examples of great teachers who touch souls take responsibility for themselves and others, and build permanent monuments in the hearts and minds of students and colleagues. They nourish us.